moving on to the uh, next session paytm is a, a name or a uh, app that we are all familiar of whether direct or where embedded a, or paytm the unicorn is present in uh, the lives of 130 uh, crores of india so uh, let's hear some uh, actual stories uh, real examples from paytm uh, we are joined by uh, Sid Suri, Head of Marketing at Sandbird, one of our sponsors, and Abhishek Madan, Head of Product at Paytm uh, Insider. Uh, Paytm Insider is a platform uh, for, to uh, find, uh, explore, and um, experience uh, events and some of the services. Welcome, Abhishek. Welcome, Sid. Thank you. Thanks, Prashant. Yeah, over to you. Sure. Sid, would you like to say something? Should I start? No, why don't you take it away, Abhishek, and then I All will right. uh, talk after you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Abhishek Madan. I head the product management practice uh, at Paytm Insider. Like Prashant mentioned, Paytm Insider is actually an entertainment company. Uh, we host events, we ticket events and movies, but I'm not here to talk about entertainment at all. For the last year or so, I have been working on the mothership, on the core money transfer experience at Paytm. And I want to show you something that we've been building out. Um, as you can see, this is the Paytm homepage. Uh, I hope all of us are familiar with it. But when you swipe left from the Paytm homepage, you see what we've been building out. It's a section called Messages. Messages is a chat-powered payments and engagement platform, right? Lots of buzzwords. Chat-powered payments and engagement platform. Fundamentally, I'll show you what we've built and I'll also talk about why we've built it. Uh, it. It sort of represents a change in how we look at transaction history. Um, traditionally, Paytm has looked at transaction history as a chrono chronological list of payments. But if you think about payments, payments are very closely linked to identities. I don't think of um, payments as, did I, did I pay the shopkeeper on Saturday, 19th of May at 11.32 AM? I just think of it as, did I pay the shopkeeper? Did I send money to my mother? And this view sort of represents that. It represents an identity first view of payments. So here you can see a bunch of identities that I chat with or I pay to. Uh, we have Shruti, we have Ashwin, we have Deepak, Anu, Ethan, Himanshu, Ashish. All of these are people that I pay to or I chat with. And um, I, our investment in identity goes more than just as a navigational tool. If I go to Ashwin's chat, you see that I've sent him some money. We've had some conversations. Ashwin's actually a product manager who works on this product, which is why there's so many one rupee transactions. And if I hit one of these transactions, I get to see transaction details. I get to see how I sent money, at what time I sent it, etc. But um, we invest in identities in a way where if I tap on Ashwin's profile, I get a very clear view of who this person is. Ashwin's uploaded a nice picture. And Ashwin P-O-B-L, the name you see over there, is how I've saved him in my contacts, right? This is his identity in the context of my address book. And underneath that, we also have his bank verified name, which is Ashwin Sharma, so that I understand his identity even in the context of the banking system. Right, So the first reason why we built this was to invest in identities, to build an identity first view of transactions and to build a very, build a very clear view or a very clear way of identifying people you're paying. This isn't a standalone section. This actually links very deeply to our money transfer experience. If you look at our new money transfer homepage, this as well has pivoted to an identity first approach. I have names over here of people I interact with. I hit Nihar's name and I am headed to his chat. I can hit pay over here and give Nihar a payment. I can ensure this is the right person by looking at the context that we share, right? I can also go to Nihar's profile, much like Ashwin's profile. Nihar B is how I've saved him. Nihar Venugopal is his name. And this is very useful even when you're making new payments. Uh, for example, if I, go to, if I were to go to money transfer and let's say I was sending some money to my mother-in-law, okay? I seem to have, yeah. Let's say I'm paying my mother-in-law. Um, I've never paid my mother-in-law. I'm a terrible son-in-law, but you can see that um, you can see that you have their identity up front. It says Sharmila Das Gupta, and it also has their identity in terms of my contact book, which is mother-in-law right on top. Cool. So that's the first reason we've built what we've built, um, which is having an identity-first approach to everything. The second reason why we've built this is to capture context that we were otherwise losing out on. 
right? Traditionally, there has been no way for two people to speak on Paytm. So if I take the example of Shruti, this is, a, this is very much a real life example. In fact, everything you see in this demo is like little fragments of my life. I haven't constructed anything for this demo. It's all real. So Shruti runs a dog boarding place where I board my dog. I paid her 1800 rupees and this usually would have followed a phone call followed. This would have been followed by a phone call where I call her and tell her, Hey Shruti, I sent you 1800 rupees on Paytm. Check it out. But instead I can capture that context in this uh, sort of chat box itself. I can tell her, hi Shruti, this is for my dog. She can say, thank you. And previously we spoke about how every payment is very strongly linked to an identity. Every payment is also very strongly linked to a context. When you split rent, you do it with a roommate. When you uh, split Netflix, you do it with a friend that you that you really like. And this context isn't limited to just people who are on Paytm. We want you to enrich every payment, even if that person is not on Paytm. Um, uh, a payment I have over here is, is someone called Miss Pujita. Pujita put out a tweet saying she needs donations for a cause that I happen to care about. And I sent her some money. Now, three weeks from now, if I were to stumble on this payment, there is no way I would remember this, right? It's a spur of the moment donation. There is no way I would remember, remember why I sent 5,000 rupees to Ms. Pojita. But because I have a chat interface where even if the other party is not on Paytm, I am able to add notes to contextualize payments for myself. So I'm able to quote reply that payment and say, hey, this is why I had sent it. It was for this tweet. I can tap on the tweet. I can read it. I can understand why I paid the person. Um, this is also very useful in another use case. If you look at um, how online payments happen in India, a lot of them go through a payment gateway. Now, these are all payments I've done to Cash Free Payments India, which is a payment gateway. And there is no way for me to distinguish one from the other. I don't know why I paid 399. I don't know why I paid 10,500. Using this tool, I can contextualize these payments. I've left a note for myself. It says the 10.5K is for a chat I've had with Samir on Facebook. It's slightly meta. It's a chat message referencing to another, referencing another chat message. But that's the power of this. I can sort of contextualize every payment. If the person is on Paytm, it's context through a conversation. If the person is not on Paytm, it's context through a comment I leave. Um, I could also have uploaded an invoice. I could have uploaded a document. I could have sent a voice note to myself. You can do all of that stuff, right? So you spoke about two things, uh, why we built this. The first one was to build an identity first approach to payments. Uh, and transaction history. The second one was to capture context that Paytm was previously missing out on. And the third reason why we've built this is distribution. When you think about it, Paytm is a massive ecosystem, right? And we have a lot of internal businesses and partner businesses who are looking for distribution. This inbox, this chat powered payments and engagement platform, the engagement is literally for our partners and for our businesses. It gives them a destination where they can engage a user or send them reminders or send them useful information. Um, you'll see that I have a chat pinned, which is electricity bills. My wife is paranoid about electricity bills. Oh, okay, one second. I hope you folks can still hear me. We can hear you, yeah. Okay, super. Let me just try to restart this mirroring. I'm sorry about this, but generally when you try to mirror an Android phone on a Mac OS, these are the problems that you have. Okay, anyway, I was mostly done with my demo. So what I'll do is close this for now. We were talking about distribution. So um, how it works is that we have all of these internal businesses um, like electricity bills, recharges, payments. Um, and what happens is that they need a destination to engage their users. We also have partners who build mini apps, uh, which are web apps that live inside the Paytm app. Um, and they do require a channel of communication with uh, customers. So what this chat powered engagement and payments platform does is it gives them a destination to target their customers, right? I am able to um, send a push saying, hey, you have an electricity bill coming up. You have uh, you had 3,000 rupees deducted from your payments account, from your Paytm payments bank account. We can send all those messages. And while we offer distribution, we have strong safeguards against spam. You can actually go to messages and block anybody. You can block Paytm businesses. 
Uh, growth managers who I work with hate hate us for this. But if you feel that a Paytm vertical is uh, spamming you, just go block them. I want messages to be your slice of Paytm, right? While it is a platform for payments and engagements, it is your platform for your payments and the businesses you care about. So that's what we're building this for. This is sort of that slice of Paytm that really means the most to you. Okay, so uh, to recap, we covered three reasons why we're building this. The first one was identity. I have a very short deck that I'll take you through. Um, I hope you can see my deck. Cool. Not so good. yeah, so three reasons we went through identity, context, and distribution. There are two slightly more philosophical reasons why we built a chat platform. And one has to do with the past, one has to do with the future. Um, over the last couple of years, chat has been massively commoditized. If you just think about the you know, 10 applications I've used from today morning, which would be Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Strava, StreamYard, Uber Conference, Slack, WhatsApp, literally everything has chat. Twitter has converted DMs to be like chat. Even if I think Strava is the only app that I mentioned that doesn't have chat. And if Strava built chat tomorrow, we wouldn't blink. Right. So chat is mega commoditized, which means that uh, consumers really understand it. And it's become the de facto identity based user experience. So when we want to add a flavor of identity on user experience, chat becomes sort of our, our choice. It's a de facto choice. It's mildly a zeitgeist right now. So that's why we picked chat. It's also much easier to build because it's been commoditized. Uh, companies like Sendbird, uh, Sendbird does a fantastic job in helping us build, build an at par chat product. And the second part is the future, which is extensibility. Um, and I think some of my Paytm Insider Entertainment DNA will start betraying itself now. But you can do so many things on chat, like, like our friends in China have shown. Uh, I can build a community on chat. I can do split payments on chat. Last IPL, a developer from my team built um, a group chat where you could pin an IPL scoreboard and just chat with your friends. Now I understand that while you might come to Paytm chat for payments and engagement, you're not going to come here for entertainment, right? Uh, but that's today. In two years, we might be in a place where you come to us for entertainment. Chat allows us to lay the foundation for that. Chat gives us a realistic shot at building better fulfillment on the Paytm app in terms of entertainment, in terms of community, in terms of just extending this to do cool stuff. So those are the two reasons why we really decided to go with chat to sort of fulfill our identity-based view of payments and to capture context distribution, all the wonderful things I spoke about. Um, now that we've spoken about why we build this, I would like to spend some time on how we build this. This is a product manager's view of the architecture. I'm not a backend engineer, so this is mega simplified. All the Kafka's and the pipelines have been rubbed off from this drawing, and you're free to look at it. But what I would like to bring your eyes to is that golden arrow between Paytm messages backend, which is the backend that powers the feature I was showing you, and Sendbird. It is this platform, it's this sort of this connection using Sendbird's platform APIs that make a lot of magic possible. These platform APIs sort of give us the building blocks that we can use to build cool stuff. I'll give you a few examples. You saw payments in these rich templates that had rupees 11 written. I could tap on it, see payment history, uh, payment details. All of that is possible because the messages backend can insert messages directly into Sendbird. Um, you saw Ethan and Pujita and all these people who are not even on Paytm, right? They just they have dummy users created that I can add context to. That is possible because Sendbird offers us platform APIs. In fact, when you think about Paytm, we're, we're pretty wide, uh, even in terms of consumer touch points. We have the Paytm main app. We have the Paytm money app, Paytm mall app. We have Paytm for business. We have Paytm insider. We have all of these apps. And because of these, because of these platform APIs, I can build walled gardens that I can deploy into each of these apps. So the work I do once is reusable by every business unit inside Paytm. So uh, Sendbird platform API is massive help. They sort of gave us the building blocks to build a lot of these things. And um, another sort of pertinent question is, why did we use Sendbird instead of just building this ourselves? And there's a very simple answer to that, which is that day to day for me to build messages is a massively complex task. Uh, while I showed you the product, you must have seen a bunch of payments. Those payments come from Paytm UPI, Paytm Wallet, Paytm Postpaid, Paytm Payments Bank, which is NEFT, IMPS, co-branded credit cards. There are other instruments of payment that I can't even remember. And all of these are being presented in the same user experience. These are completely separate backends that have nothing to do with each other. 
And our attempt is to bring all of this data and show it in one place. It's a massive tech um, complication. And it's also a massive compliance complication because all of these are heavily regulated products. On top of that, I have to care about other regulated products like lending, insurance. We have an equity trading business. Um, to have all of these in one UX requires us to work very closely with their compliance teams. You know, three years ago, every product that I mentioned right now was probably a standalone company. And today I'm taking what is essentially a suite of 10 companies and trying to show them in one user experience. So there's a lot of compliance headache. And all of this is peppered with Paytm scale. We're talking about 20 to 30 million active users a day. And during season, even more than that. You know, even before we launch this product, simply by just transferring some of the old messages, old transactions, old historical records, we hit a billion messages, billion with a B. So scale is nuts. And Sendbird really offloads all of that for us. Um, chat also has a lot of product complexity. You take, you give any chat to a user, and they'll be like, "Why can't I reply? Why can't I? Why can't I quote reply? Why can't I send a video message? Why can't I tell what was the last time this user was online? Why don't I see a typing indicator? Uh, you know." So the MVP bar for chat is so high that we would have to invest significant resource and deal with this product complexity, this feature complexity of real-time messaging, notifications, rich messages, along with our existing complexities. And Sendbird really sort of offloaded all of that from us. Um, so that is what we built, why we built it. This has rolled out to production on Monday. I am very excited for all of you to use it and to tell me why it sucks so that I can make it better. Uh, but I would love to hear your comments on our new payment workflows. And this is pretty much uh, what I have. Over to you, Sid. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, that was a wonderful overview of Paytm. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't envy your job, the amount of complexity you guys deal with. And just, you know, every little problem is so much harder with scale and servicing all the different verticals and all the different masters that you have as a service within Paytm as, you know, obviously one of the most complex and successful companies uh, in the world. So amazing job. I'll give you a quick intro of um, Sendbird. I'll keep this very brief. Guys, I just want to give you a little bit of who we are. Um, you know, we are, oh, do I switch to mine? Yep. Uh, look, we help customers connect digitally, right? We help customers like Paytm, um, like Ola, like Dream11, uh, connect with their customers in their mobile apps. We do it to help them build relationships with their users. We help them drive transactions, and we help them keep those conversations safe with moderation. Right? That's basically what we do through our chat, voice, and video platform um, that Paytm uses, amongst others. And, and again, you know, just like Abhishek said, right? Like you've got a company as uh, as sophisticated as Paytm with all the developers in the world and some of the most, you know, again, uh, talented and sophisticated engineering org and developer organization and uh, the, the question is why build your own messaging platform, right? Why, you know, why add one more risk and one more complexity and one more thing that is not your core business that you build yourself, right? And this is getting harder and harder. Like these simple problems of sending chats back and forth at high scale, high compliance, high risk, you know, become problems that is just easier to outsource. And that's what, and that's essentially what we do. We are that outsource platform of chat voice video. Um, and we like to call ourselves a user engagement platform because really it's much more than just sending messages, right? It's building that relationship with the user. It's helping users um, understand your own products and services. It's making chat that command center of the app so that all the interactions happen within chat, all that engagement, the retention, the monetization can all now happen within chat because fundamentally deep down as human beings, you know, we are conversational in nature. If you think about the paradigm of the web, the paradigm of the web is this point and click, browse menu paradigm, but that is not a human paradigm. A human paradigm is conversations. So why send users across menus, clicking, pointing, when you can just in a conversation say, hey, thanks for the payment. What else do you need? Would you like to buy this? You know, your order is confirmed. Do you want to check your status, right? Um, and that's and that's really where the web is going, and uh, we hope to be able to be part of that journey and facilitate that for lots of different companies. Um, you know, I think the only thing I want to point out here is we have about 150 million users on the platform uh, on a monthly basis. So 
Uh, you know, PTM, of course, is one of our largest customers, but, um, you know, with 150 million monthly users, we think we're probably the largest chat platform you haven't heard of. Um, and uh, we power some of the largest apps in the world, um, uh, you know, across healthcare. What is healthcare? Doctor-patient interactions. Over the last 12 months, there's been a ton of those. Um, virtual visits as, you know, it's dangerous to travel to hospitals and whatnot. Um, so facilitating those video calls and chat calls between doctors and patients, marketplaces between buyers and sellers um, or peer-to-peer, -peer. Um, on-demand, ride-sharing, food delivery, Ola is a customer in India, um, uh, Delivery Hero in Europe, iFood in Brazil, Kareem now in the Middle East, community, we have Reddit as a customer uh, doing all of their DMs on our platform, Hinge, the dating app, Yahoo, um, Entertainment, Dream 11, MPL, amongst others. Um, so the largest and most popular, most demanding apps in the world essentially have outsourced their chat, voice, and video interactions inside the mobile app to us. Um, and that's basically what we do every day uh, across fintech, across marketplaces, um, across communities, uh, ride sharing, and digital healthcare. So uh, that's my really quick, uh, quick uh, pitch of who we are. And uh, Thank you so much, Abhishek, and to the PTM team who have been great partners and uh, and great customers. And it's been exciting to watch their journey and all the innovation they've done. So uh, thank you, PTM, for uh, joining us on this. And thank you for to the API India team. And uh, you know, like the last uh, last presenter said, guys, everybody out there, please take care. Please be safe, and uh, we'll all get through this together. So thank you. Thanks, Abhishek. Thanks, it. Um, I have some questions for you. Um, so I'll go with uh, Sid first. Uh, how does this compare to Twilio? <laughs> Good question. I wasn't expecting that as my first question. Good question. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Twilio, honestly, has been enormously successful. You can't take anything away from them. But everything they do is outside the mobile app. An SMS is outside the mobile app. A phone call is outside the mobile app. Who owns the data on the SMS? iMessage. WhatsApp, Android messages, right? Where are the analytics? iMessage, Android, WhatsApp messages, right? The entire Twilio experience is outside of the mobile app. And in a time where data was not as ubiquitous and not as cheap and easy, um, it made sense to use the telecom networks. But the Paytm experience is all within the mobile app. You ask a Paytm product manager, hey man, do you want to give your data and your user experience and your customer over to iMessage or Android? They'll be like, are you crazy? Like those are my biggest competitors. So uh, you know, we focus on the experience within the mobile app, while they focus on the experience outside of the mobile app. And that's the big difference. And you know, we hope in the long term the trend will be towards more and more of that experience within the mobile app. Okay. Uh, and next one mm, to Abhishek. Uh, how is Paytm sees competition landscape with messaging apps like WhatsApp entering the payment space? Um, I think if you look at WhatsApp, they, they are part of the payment space. Uh, what they're trying to do is build payments into their conversational UI. Uh, what we are trying to do is add some amount, some amount of contextualization on existing payments. So uh, that's why I want to keep it very real. I don't expect you to chat with random people on Paytm. I'm pretty sure you will do that on WhatsApp. Um, so in terms of that, we are looking at very... Uh, practical, very direct communication, very brief and useful communication over here. Whereas WhatsApp is more about people, you know, you're with I, in two years, if we reach that space, that'd be fantastic. But I do think uh, as mm -hmm. ahead, we are of WhatsApp in terms of payments. WhatsApp is that far ahead in terms of chat. So we both have some catching up to do over there. Okay. So um, next question is to probably both of you. So uh, last one and a half years have changed the way we live with the way we uh, get get entertained, right? So uh, how have you, what is your experience? How, what is that growth in terms of traffic or in terms of what are those areas in Paytm Insider, which is bringing in uh, more traffic to you? Any trends on what actually India is doing in a lockdown or in uh, or in a scenario when you can't go out to watch a movie in a, a PVR or multi another multiplex? Got it. And how uh, is super... it? How is how? And just to add, and how has Senbird? Uh, you know, uh, did you end up scaling up or bringing in more features to uh, help the customers like Paytm Insider? 
Sure. I'll let Abhishek sure. go first. Thanks, Sir. So, um, last year we couldn't do NH7 Weekender and we literally did an online version of NH7 Weekender. NH7 Weekender is probably India's one of India's best known music festivals. We had 25,000 people attend it. Many of them were concurrent. Um, and we actually used Sendbird to power a group chat, uh, a public chat for those people. So I think last year was when we were having fun with digital events. Um, we had Team Natch, which was um, these two girls who teach people how to dance over Zoom. And they really blew up. We had a bunch of these digital creators really blow up, do really good digital events. And uh, we had obviously NH7 Weekend where we use Sendbird as well. I think that was all last year because last year everyone was like, hey, it's a pandemic. I want to be entertained. This year, things are a little more grave. I think we are a little past that stage where we want to be entertained at home um, and you know have creators making events. Now there are deaths, there's vaccination. It's, I mean, it's a really grave situation. So I would say last year we did quite well with digital events. This year, things are a little slow. This year, a lot of consumption on OTT and stuff like that. But in terms of creators reaching out and making fun new stuff, it's just not the context for that, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, real quick, you know, honestly, no surprises. I mean, 12 months into the pandemic, I think everybody knows what what benefited and what suffered. Um, you know, uh, around March last year, our numbers for some of our apps started to go crazy. Our food delivery volume was just through the roof. Entertainment, live streaming through the roof. Gaming through the roof. Uh, online shopping through the roof. Like all our customers in those spaces, their numbers just started to scale massively. Um, ride sharing went down. Um, you know, obviously we have a lot of, we had a bunch of travel marketplaces, they went down. Um, you know, we gave relief to a lot of customers. We gave discounts and we gave, uh, you know, suspended payments to a lot of customers. But then on the flip side, a lot of customers were like, their traffic was just going bonkers, right? And we, uh, and we had to scale very quickly to support them. So it was sort of the, the, ta the, the familiar tale of the pandemic that we all at this point know sort yeah. of industries kind of went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Abhishek. Thanks it, uh, so for this wonderful session. It was uh, really helpful. Thanks, Prashant. My pleasure. Thanks, Prashant. Thank Bye. Bye-bye.